Hello and welcome back to the International Down Low, where we give you the lowdown on the teams and the players going to the International. From their humble beginnings to their biggest victories, their darkest secrets to their most proud achievements, their memes, their dreams, we got it all here, so let's get it started. This episode we will focus on the original gangsters who came from obscure grounds, only to rise up to become the Olympic gods of Dota, Team OG! Now we all know about OG at this point, many of you know them as the best team in the world. After all, they've won every single major except for Shanghai, but that tournament didn't really exist anyway, right? Right. But even though everyone can agree that they are Dota 2's strongest contenders, what some newer players might not know is that they started as underdog. Let's go back in time, way, way back into the history of Dota. Nope, not even that far back, let's go back all the way to Heroes of New World. Back in the day, Zahan, a 15-year-old lad by the name of Noteo, met a boy by the name of Fly, and they began playing together after forming a fast friendship. The two created a team that would later become the unsponsored side project of Fnatic back in late 2011. The squad quickly found wins, securing the first land victory at DreamHack, gaining an official Fnatic sponsorship and winning several lands after, eventually transitioning into Dota 2 and making it to TI3, taking the top 8. The duo would remain in Fnatic until 2014, when they both switched to the first iteration of the Team Secret. Their ride-or-die friendship came to an abrupt end when Fly was kicked from Team Secret in the fall, with No-Tail remaining until the January shuffle. No-Tail went on to play the infamous Cloud9 roster, which, what a roster that was, and Fly moved to a few teams most notably Complexity, who made it to TI5 post-kicking. After being a card and gaining little success, no Tail and Fly left their teams to be united again, knowing that no team's power could ever compare to the incredible force of their friendship. The duo formed Team Monkey Business, with no Tail bringing in Crit, a Danish support prodigy, and Fly bringing in Moomeander, who had played with Complexity and who happened to be a longtime rival of no Tail back from their Han days. The gang had been formed, but they were missing one more. That's when they found the baddest boy in all of Euro-ranked Dota, the rising star of the rankage, the Mad Murder and Miracle. A team of old friends, bitter rivals, and new blood. The gang dropped the Monkey Business Monkey after less than impressive placings in WCA and prepared for the first ever Dota Major, becoming the mysterious OG. What does OG stand for? Some will say it's the original gangsters, and some will say uh, other things. Some people say orangutan ganja. I say I don't fucking know. <laughs> But despite what it means, the team adopted a serious no-monkey-business attitude, and they went into the biggest tournament they had ever attended. The Frankfurt Major looked like it would drive by the new squad and leave them for dead. They had a rough group stage and immediately lost to Vega, putting them in the lower bracket from day one and leaving them with only one loss before they were removed from the competition. What does a team do when their backs are up against a wall? Some may crumble under the pressure. Many will try but fail. OG, they nutted the fuck up! Fly began drafting like no one else, including the team, had ever seen before in the patch. A draft consisting of Adameta heroes, forgotten warriors like Huskar and Meepo, and playing in an aggressive initiation style, heroes and lanes unlike anybody else at the time. OG's unique drafts, completely new playstyle and outstanding plays kept them alive in the lower bracket, but despite playing every wild card they could and fighting with the ferocity of a junkyard dog with nothing to lose, they were still expected to go down. But they didn't. Win after win with death one loss away, OG came out of nowhere busting chaps and every fool that tried to step up all the way until the finals, where they had to face off against Secret, led by the one man that had torn them apart. Team Secret and Puppy had pulled Fly and O-Tail away from their first team fanatic and then kicked them to the curb, splitting up their friendship and leading to months of hardship for the most. But now, the two homies were back with a new crew. The friendship was united and the game was strong. The fight was on! No Tail had said that Puppy was the last boss before the tournament had even begun, and now it was time to throw down against the old crew. Secret had experience. Secret had wins. They had plans and all the fan support a team could possibly muster. And they got dumped on, homie! In a win nobody was expecting, the newly founded OG went against all odds and medicine won the first ever major. The team went on to fight in several more tournaments, winning Dream League, but remaking their style after it was figured out post-major and experimenting for a few tournaments later. They laid low after the major for some time, but when the Manila Major loomed, they won more Dream Leagues and got ready for battle yet again. Never before had a team won two Valve events, and after placing at the Shanghai Major, the people did not think much of OG again. But if there's one thing that we know about the OG squad, it's that they thrive when nobody sees them coming. Domination after domination, OG remained in the upper bracket of the Manila Major, decimating all who came at the Kings. They were the only teams who have ever won two Valve events and had a hard-fought victory over tournament favorite Liquid. And then they won Boston. And then they won Kia. The only team that has ever, or most likely will ever, take home every single Major trophy. Hell, OG has pretty much won goddamn everything, but that happens later. OG won it all, everything, except the one big prize. The International. The one thing that they could never get their hands on. The big win. Surprisingly, despite their incredible records and glorious victories, OG has only made about $5 million in prizes. TI winners EG have netted over double. OG wanted TI, and despite being the favorites for the event and despite winning everything, they got hit hard. Going into the loser's bracket immediately after and getting 2 0 by TNC and one of the greatest upsets in TI history, the crowd cheered for TNC beating the big bad OG boys, but the team took the loss heavily and brutally. Miracle and Crit, two of the best players in the world, left the squad shortly after the loss with Moon later being kicked. It was hard on them all, with Moon going as far to say, I guess the friendship and rainbow thing is bullshit. It was the darkest moment for the team and it was just two of them again, the old friends Hotel and Fly. But just like Frankfurt, their backs were once again against the wall. And we all know what happens when OG is the underdog. 
they fight back. First thing was first, they needed a new offlaner. Moon was a huge part of their play style, and their shaker pretty much won them in Nilla, so they needed somebody with just as much aggression and insanity. They found their replacement, and more, in S4, a TI3 winner. S4 knew the duo after playing with them in the first iteration of Team Secret, who just kinda showed up on the doorstep post-TI6. Alliance did just as bad, if not worse, than OG at TI6, but S4, in his infinite knowledge, knew that he could succeed with this squad. S4 doesn't speak to people that don't win TI, so the transition was indeed difficult, considering he had famously been one of the world's leading mid player. But S4 adapted and thrived. Next, they needed a new support. And out of all places, they found one in Jarak. Jarak's been a goddamn nightmare in Manila on Team Liquid, his place giving OG the most trouble they had ever had to win a major. But this must have been what drew him to the team, and leaving behind his blood brother Matama Man only seemed to make him stronger. Finally, they needed a new miracle. How exactly do you replace a miracle? The kid was considered one of the greatest players the game had ever seen, the 9K God. For a while, OG's entire playstyle was simply called the 4 Protect Miracle. They would need to find a famous mid, a mid so experienced and wise that he could surpass the unsurpassable. And they found it in a untested 16 year old teenager from down under, summoned for IG, Anna. And thus the squad was reborn, and they went right back to kicking dicks, winning every single major after in a slew of other tournaments. After their darkest hour, through friendship, dedication, positivity, and skill, the team came back from the brink of death, immediately returning to be a force of unparalleled power. But TI rears its head again. The greatest challenge. The event that almost broke the team, but made them stronger in the end. OG is no longer the underdog, forgotten in the minds of the players and the fans alike. No, they are now the titans, men with the targets on their backs, the proven best team in the world. Every single organization, every single team will be pouring over the replays, printing packs of stats, and working day in and day out for thousands of hours to find any tiny mistake that they can exploit and to beat them in the biggest prize pool in Dota history. But that's the problem. OG knows this, and that means that their backs are once again up against the wall. They know the whole world expects them to crumble under that pressure, and just like always, when the world puts OG in an unwinnable situation, they are ready to fight. But can they take that one final goal? We will find out soon. But for now, let's take a look at the players on this colorful team and see what they bring to the Mighty Green Giant. The last time we introduced Sly, he was the second in command of Complexity Gaming shortly before TI5. With a decent performance on the team, he stepped away to form Monkey Business, with his old friend No-Tail later becoming OG. Sly was always known as a fantastic drafter in Han, and he has played a variety of roles since, but seems to be in his element as OG's captain and drafter. He named himself after his heroic dog, who saved his sister's life by battling a snake, and who later died of its wounds. Sly's career took a hit from the split from Secret, as he tried to juggle his career as a Combat Kramaga instructor and play Dota. But he decided to go full Dota after a while, leaving his father, the creator of Combat Kramaga, to look on in eternal shame. Nah, though, his dad likes Dota, it's all good. Many people thought that his amazing drafting performance was a fluke at the Frankfurt Major, but after his several victories and his unique style, he is known as one of the most creative and aggressive drafters and captains in the Dota 2 scene. Frequently finding and abusing the most powerful heroes in this patch, like the stupid goddamn Bird Phoenix, Fly is a calculating mastermind in the brains behind the brawn of the Team OG. Not that he isn't the brawn too, I mean, holy shit, look at this fucking kid. Many wonder how it is that OG wins all these majors and tier 1 tournaments, but the answer is right here. The captain of OG has always run his ship, and he seldom goes off the course. One of the founders of Monkey Business and one of the most seasoned players, no has been a loved figure in the community since 2012, when he made Fnatic a household name. World renowned for his micro skills, excelling in heroes like Meepo and Chen, he has even microed AFK teammates in order to win games. No Tail has been the star of many teams before finding its greatness in the success of OG. The biggest question remains, however, what makes this guy so goddamn lovable? I mean, look at that face. What a beautiful flower. Something about No Tail makes people passionately follow him and consistently support him no matter what trials and tribulations he faces. After extensive research to find out why the community is so obsessed with him, I found out one simple fact. No Tail is actually just a well rounded good person. He loves animals, including his dog. He teaches his teammates how to deal with rage and spread kindness. And all he's ever wanted to do was be on a team with his buddy he's having fun and winning Dota. That's just... God damn it, he's just, he's just a nice boy. Always down to do interviews, always down to cast, and always down to do show matches, always down to have a smile on his face. No Tail is the best friend that we've all never had. One of the best representatives Dota has to offer his story is one of hard work, friendship, and triumph. No matter where you come from, no matter what hardships are in your way, in Dota, anything can work. My god. We have covered S4 before in our Alliance video way back, but things have changed for him drastically since. The rock that held Alliance together through sheer skill, S4 did what many people deemed impossible, going from a mid roll to an offlaner. You see, most people can carry to support, mid to carry, but the offlaner is a whole different animal. You need to have it all to offlane. Survive one against two in the lane. Know when to gank, how to gank, when to fight, who to help, how to farm. Many offlaners spend their entire careers in that one position, perfecting it and improving it until they are masters. S4 looked at that position, one that played drastically from his own, and said, fuck it, and learn how to do what takes people their entire professional careers to achieve in just a couple of weeks. Now I know what you're thinking. This is just S4, that quiet Swedish guy, Bulldog soft spoken friend, but that is just his public persona. The truth is that he is a cold, calculating genius that pro players talk about in hushed whispers at the ends of events. I have I personally heard players talk about being on s 4 team, how he will tell them what an enemy will do in a team fight, what he will do to counter it, and how they will win a team fight 10 seconds before it happens from an enemy smoke gang. The son of Magnus has become one of the most terrifying figures in all of Dota on OG. Merciless, calculating, and unstoppable. He remembers the million dollar dream.
stream, Carl. He doesn't care about items and uses the same ugly-ass common axe weapon for three years. His voice is not recordable on Valve's highest-tech microphones, even in true sight. He has seen the best of Dota, he has seen the worst of times, and he has come for his second TI victory. It's time for S4 to become the only person who have ever won two internationals, and no one will stop him. Fellow former Han player, Jerax the Fantastic Finn has been in the scene for quite a while before finding his fame in the Dota 2 world. Beginning in 2013, Jerax was originally approached by Sing Sing, who took him in from his first team, A Rat in the Dark, and moved him to the real competitive world. Like all successful pro players, he eventually left Sing Sing's team to achieve the goal of winning games, and then it happened. The Three Spirits update, and the release of a new and powerful Dota hero, the Earth Spirit. Some players are defined by the heroes that they main, some male Storm Spirit, Artifi Shadow Feet, but for Jerax and Earth Spirit, it was the other way around. Earth Spirit was defined by Jerax. He played the hero with such skill and intensity that the hero was molded around his standard. 78% win rate, 26 game win streak. He saw the hero in ways that no one else could and became a household name because of it. People told him that he would never really be a pro if he just grinded one hero into utter perfection. He set out to prove them all wrong. Eventually, he returned to pro play, bouncing from team to team, finding his greatest success in four anchors plus sea captain, a finish squad with Matumba Man, the real life sea captain, and four other anchors holding him down. Eventually, he left the team for others like Team Tinker, but never found results of friendship like the one he had with Matumba. This him eventually to form five jungs, with his old friend Matumba in a recently left right Kuro and mysterious mercenary mind control. The team was picked up by Liquid and the rest became history. Jerax and his friends put Liquid on the map and turned the team into true contenders for the first time in a very long time. With his skills revered, his team respected, and his wins rolling in, the world was Jerax's oyster. But one team stood in his way consistently, the Bastards from OG. He fought them mercilessly in every single event, and after they won the Frankfurt Major, he beat them at the defense. They were his greatest rival, and it all accumulated at the Manila Major, where he faced OG for first place. But Liquid couldn't hold water, and the team never recovered, placing 7th at TI6. The time had come for Jerax to leave his liquid and his friends he had made there for something greater. But why did Jerax leave for OG? I might go back to the old saying, if you can't beat them, then you join them, and then you murder your old friends. Perhaps it was because he thought they were a stronger team, perhaps he wanted a challenge, but I like to think just to myself that he joined OG because it had the same colors as goddamn Earth Spirit, so he was fading to. With Jerax on the squad, OG quickly and effectively replaced the patient style of crit with the insane aggression and skills of Jerax, and they began to see major success <laughs> ever since. Matu and Jerax are still friends through it all, even to this very day. And finally, we come to Ana, the breakout player of OG. Beginning his Dota career at 12, Ana the Australian ass kicker rose in pub ranks until he decided to make a huge leap for his dream, moving from Melbourne to Shanghai in order to participate in the CDEC League, a league for high school players to get exposure. It worked, and eventually he was added to IG via a Chinese manager to be a stand-in for Ferrari 430. Stand-in he did, and he quickly became into the public eye as a standout mid, winning several tournaments. But eventually Ferrari returned, and the short-lived mid was doomed to be a stand-in for the next two years. The public saw it as a tasty drama and expected to never hear about Ana again. But then, seemingly out of the blue, OG announced their new squad. The Legend S4, TI winner in God Mid, the incredible Jerax, best initiator in Dota, and then Ana, the teenage team stand-in? To replace Miracle? The fans would instantly turn on him. Every single loss had to be Anna's fault, they would say. Of course it was! Why was he even on the team? How could he even hope to replace Miracle? Who the hell is this kid? But as the voices of doubt and flame grew louder, Anna only seemed to work harder. He pushed on, ignoring the haters and helped OG build a functioning team completely different from the past OG. The world waited for him to fail. They told him he was bad. They wrote articles about how he held his team back. But breakout performance after breakout performance, he proved them all wrong. And then, he won a major. In four months, Anna went from being a no-name to a major champion, but the stubborn ones still persisted. It was just a fluke. It was everyone else on the team, so he had to do it again. His standout mid performance won OG their long-awaited Mystic staff at the key of Major. Taking the lead in the Game 5 Finals, Anna took the reins of the team in the most challenging hour at the Major, hitting ward spots, directing team movements, and overall boosting the team with confidence when they needed it the most. Despite all this, there are still a few out there, people that doubt Anna's skill, still clinging to the notion that some kid could never defeat the legacy of Miracle, but that number shrinks every day. Because like OG, Anna never gives up. He has never needed the pity or the admiration of others. He has only needed to show the world that they were wrong. And with every win, he gets to show the world that he was never meant to be the sub. He was never meant to live in people's shadows. He has and continues to be his own man. A man that wins. Normally, we would end the episode here, but there is one more person that we need to talk about. The big secret behind OG. In every interview and in every post-match game after a big win, the OG guys always attribute a large portion of their victory to one man. Effing mad. If there's one theme to OG, besides being the underdog, besides being the champions, it is redemption. Why no tail rising from their past to find the most successful team in Dota history. As for a rising above where anyone thought he could go without alliance, and Jerax showing that leaving Liquid was justified. And Anna proving the world wrong. But Matt's story is one year's making, and his redemption came when it seemed like it may just never happen. Matt started his career in 2012, going from
going from team to team looking for his own big win. He was an idea man, constantly rethinking and reshaping the meta. But every time he got close, teams would start to crumble. Every time he was a favorite, there would be a catastrophic team failure. People started to blame him. People started to say that his ideas, the way he played the game, were not innovative at all, rather just ineffective. Most pros would give up after so many third, fourth, and sixth place losses after a few months. Mad hadn't gotten a first place in five years. He went from being a player to an analyst to a coach, knowing that the way he saw the game was the right way after all. But people laughed at him and called him a has-been. But one day, after getting off the panel at the Shanghai Major, he decided to coach OG. Mad has always looked at the game a little bit differently, and his teams typically fall apart. But when he found OG, he finally found a friendship that wouldn't break. A team that would respect his thoughts and let him guide them without the questions. They have won every major since. People tell you to give up when it looks dark. People tell you to move on. But sometimes, sometimes, you know you were right. And if having Mad and OG are any proof, sometimes all it takes is just to make the world listen. Well, that's it for the TI download. Thanks for watching, and thank you all for the support. These guys over here supported me on Patreon to make this vid possible, and they even got to help review it and check for factual inaccuracies along with Twitch chat. So, uh, if anything is wrong, it's all your fault, not mine. If you want to be part of that fun, check out the Patreon in the description of this vid, or just check me out on my stream whenever you want. Special thanks to our intro guy, David, who made those wonderful graphics, our wonderful editor, Kazmer, and of course, our new guy, the sound dude, that the Sprite, who made the beautiful noises that you heard at the beginning of the video. Thank you everybody for watching, and I hope to see you and OG at TI7.